so just to recap we talked about how the playstation is sold double we've talked about how the resale value is just insane the demand is super high for the playstation 5 versus the xbox series x we talked about the game pass promises made and broken all of those things contribute to the failure of the xbox series x to beat the playstation 5 and this isn't too dissimilar to the playstation 3 and the xbox 360 the playstation 3 was the more powerful console but like i've said in past videos the playstation 3 outsold the xbox 360 now the xbox series x has the more powerful console but still can't win Microsoft has been proudly discussing how powerful its Xbox Series X console is for months now, but in practice, early game tests show the PlayStation 5 outperforming Microsoft's console. While the Xbox Series X takes a slight lead in 4K and ray tracing performance modes on Devil May Cry 5, the high frame rate mode runs noticeably better on the PlayStation 5 with frame rate gaps between the two systems at more than 40 FPS in some scenes. The dips look really strange to me and it kind of suggests to me some kind of API limitation on the Xbox side where the GPU is being held back by something, suggests Digital Foundry Editor Richard Ledbetter. We're talking about the Series X, we're not talking about the Series S here because we know that the Series S is not as powerful as the PlayStation in any capacity. And I will say that it is still very early, but it's about the games and how they run and how they play. Elsewhere, Microsoft has a marketing deal for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which was not on the Game Pass, so that every time you see it promoted in a TV ad, it'll appear alongside next-gen Xbox consoles. You'd expect Xbox Series X would be the best place to play this new game on console, but the PS5 outperforms again. Digital Foundry found that the Xbox Series X version of Valhalla includes a lot of screen tearing and regular dips below 60 frames per second. So the premier game that the Xbox Series X was trying to push was Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is not an exclusive, was also on the PlayStation 5. At the very least, the PlayStation did have exclusives. So again, this is another kind of reason as to why how Xbox is failing to win the console war. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which is not on the Xbox Game Pass, was also demonstrates the difference between these consoles. It shows an advantage for Xbox Series X in ray tracing performance, but Microsoft console falls behind in the 120 FPS mode, which 120 FPS mode is what these systems were kind of marketing towards. The 120 FPS mode is kind of to which the bar these consoles are being judged in delivering that. The reason for this, and this is more so a why video, Microsoft only allowed developers to submit games for Xbox Series X certification in June. After delivering an update to its game developers kit that followed the company's rather tight schedule for dev kit allocations, all the while I've been consistently hearing that many developers had access to PS5 dead kits far in advance of Xbox versions. Unfortunately, I am someone who believes that Xbox does not care about the games. So they wouldn't allow game developers to get their kit at a reasonable time to maybe have them make good AAA games. The PlayStation 5 got their shit out early, got the kits to people, and they were able to make exclusive titles, and if not exclusive, at least have the games run at that 120 FPS threshold. We could say this and that and provide an excuse for Xbox for not allowing people to get the dev kit, but that's on Xbox. That's not on anybody else. So we can't make excuses for the poor performance of the console. Ultimately, it's the games that matter, which is 100% true, it's always been about the games. And Microsoft's launch lineup has relied heavily on its third-party games that aren't backing up its performance claims. If you're going to have the more powerful console, you would at least you would have one game that can meet the qualifications and specifications of your system. And they didn't have that and still don't today. The Xbox Series X has been great at backwards compatibility, accessibility, and accessory support, but Microsoft still needs to deliver more games from its Xbox Game Studios to really show the power of the console. I am of the opinion that I could give two shits if it's backwards compatibility because I wanna play new games. I don't wanna play a bunch of old games. I never want to play a bunch of old games, especially when a new console drops. 
I want to play the new shit. There's plenty of time to go back and play old games. And if anything, it would be way better for companies to do a remaster of their old game to work better on the new console than just to slot in an old game. That's just my opinion. But hey, congrats for being able to play a bunch of old games. So I know the video was kind of long and kind of scattered because I didn't know how to approach it. Hopefully understood the frame story is that the PlayStation 5 has won the console war. I understand the narrative but as Xbox fans I want y'all to speak up and speak out against what's going on don't be happy with just taking second-rate bullshit because you'll end up with a situation just like with the Xbox one that is a trash console that will go down in history as being one of the biggest failures of Xbox and if y'all don't get that together the Series X and S and then in two years when they release the Series X1 and the S2 they will just ask you for some more money and you still will be left with nothing to play. I know I talk a lot I might have rambled I really try not to rant I'm the grown kid and I catch you back in another video.